Hello, Hello viewers, viewers. Welcome, welcome back to, to the Munchie method, method with myself, myself Ringo8781. Um, we are in a new season, as you can see. We are currently in the 1st of July 2023, uh, which means that the season has ended. Uh, and we, we snore Champions League football. Um, can I go back and have a little look? Here we go. Go back, Go back to the 23. You can see here, uh, Marseille versus Monaco it was. Um, we actually finished a lot higher than I even anticipated. Um, I really didn't think it would be... I'm not going to say easy. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy in the slightest. We had a few big blips again, um, which resulted in a change to the tactic, um, which you see me talking about in the last video when we discussed maybe putting Vera as a Metzala. Um but that change seemed to work. Uh, if I just go to the schedule, we did lose to PSG, by the way. Just a quick spoiler warning for you all. Yeah. <laughs> Thought it was going to be incredible. It wasn't. Um, if we go back to... Uh, and it was the PSG game where we lost 2-0. This is where we left off. Um, you can see our form within, within this region was just abysmal. It was just terrible. There was not a lot going on. We were losing games too easily. We were conceding too much. We looked in um, in depth at who was playing where and what issues it was causing. Um, so we played this first game against PSG. Um, we actually had a goal rule out for offside. Um, we spoke about this in um, the Discord chat that um, I'm involved in. And it, it wasn't an offside. It was so contentious. He was he was a toenail off if he was offside. It was really frustrating. Um, that would have made the game 1-0 to us. It could have been a much different game, but it's football. Football manager, same thing. It happens. Um, so from then, we played Leon, uh, Lille in the league. A good win, a nice 3-2 win. You can see uh, we started playing Tovan wide left, which we spoke about his creativity Maybe cutting inside, he's not the best. Um, but we give it a go. Uh, we played on wide left, and he actually played very, very well. Um, won that game 3-2. A couple of blips. Again, I thought, this is where the tactics going to go wrong. And then we just went on this mental run where we only lost to Monaco. Um, we, we lost the one game, which made it... Um, which put us down in the table. But, you know, that's one. that was one game out of... You know, you can see there, is it, is it 12? Um, we lost out of in total, um, which is fantastic. Um, again, you can see we, we were testing Schick, Schick getting better average ratings than Tovan, although Tovan did get a goal in that game. Um, the Nice game was a big one. They were quite low down on the table, but they always tend to be the trickier games. Uh, and then followed that up with a, a very hard-fought victory against on uh, Anges. Ange, Ange, I don't know how you say it, I'm not French. A um, couple of injuries were picked up against Stad Rene. Um, but you can see Patrick Schick again performing, getting himself a nice penalty goal. Patrick Schick again on the score sheet. Tovan starting to perform a little bit better as well as he was played wide left. Again, another goal for Patrick Schick. He also got an assist in that game for Mohamed Darame. And it just, again, look, Patrick Schick. It's the same people scoring every week. It's Patrick Schick. It's Patrick Schick again. It's Schick and Darame, Schick and Darame. And then every now and again, Flo Tuban and pop up with a goal. Um, and that resulted us getting Champions League football, which was lovely. Um, I didn't think we'd get it this season. We were predicted to get Europa League. But I'm not going to complain. We got ourselves um, Champions League football. And a few players come in, a few players gone out. And our Mr. Monchi himself, our very own version of Monchi, Mr. Longoria, has been very busy. Um bringing people in and out of the club, as well as I have. Um, so we're just going to click on the transfer history here. Um, you can see these are all the people that we brought in anyway. Um, Emerson was the last signing to be made, uh, and then the last person to go out um, was Endo. Waratu Endo went to Nottingham Forest. He literally didn't get a kick for us. Um, so, you know, we had, to, we had to change it up a bit. Um, we basically have to be a bit shrewder this season. Um, if you look on our finances, um, we've got a lot of money now because we've got Champions League money, but you can see there, when it was coming up to April, we had £2.94 million in the bank. And then we got the telly money for the league, and then we got our Champions League money, which put us up here. 
um, which meant the transfer budget wasn't fantastic. So we used our on net scouting, as you've seen me do in a previous video, and we brought a few people in for quite cheap. Um, Luca Nets was one of the ones that we found through looking at the transfer list of players. Um, he very much buys into the the philosophy that I have in that transfer list of players can add a lot of value to your team. Um, I know, uh, you know, if you found this and just starting out FM or you're not very familiar with it, maybe you've downloaded it on um, on the the Xbox Game Pass and it's your first foray into it. Star ratings don't necessarily matter. Um, I know if you're thinking about it that way, in the same way that you think about ratings on FIFA, um, the higher the rating, the higher the star rating, the better the player. It's not the case. Um, a three-star player can easily outperform a five-star player if your tactic is not set up properly. A three-star player is basically your, your war to carry your team, so if you store war to the team. Thinking of, uh, to take an Everton example, like Gareth Barry, uh, Abdullah Decore, who we've got in real life now, um, Luca Dean as well, someone who will put in a you know a seven out of ten every week, and then every now and again puts in a nine out of ten. Very much like Luca Dean does in real life. That's that's what a three star player is on this game to me. I don't know whether you'd agree with it, but that's what I'm I'm putting it down to. Uh, and Luca Nets was transfer listed by Hertha Berlin at twenty one million pounds. We got him in on a free. Uh, I think he's going to be our, our starting left back this season. Um, if we compare him to Gideon Mensa who was outstanding. Um, Gideon Mensa on this game, he's done very, very well, but you can just see that Luka Nets is a bit more rounded. Um, if we highlight position for a full-back on attack, although they play on support, um, you can see there's not an awful lot in it. Um, the best thing about Mensa, I think he's quite he's mentally a good player, but physically, he's an absolute monster. The problem that I do have with Gideon and with Malang Sar, who used to cover left back, you may have seen it in, in the odd live com we did last season, is their their jumping ability and their heading ability. They used to get exploited quite a lot. People, uh, when I'm watching games, which is why I watch them in 3D art now, I actually prefer the 3D match engine this year compared to the old one. Um, they were kicking it wide to the fullback position because he, he was losing out on a lot of headers, whereas Luka Nets, sort of, he's, he's better than that. Um, I I think Luka will push us on to the next level. He's only 20 years of age. He's got three, four years' worth of technical and physical growth left in him because players stop growing between the age of 23 and 24 in this game, and mentally he's already great. Um, I think he's a shrewd sign and from, um, from ourselves and, of course, from... Mr. Mr. Fake Monchi himself. Um, another player we brought into the club was Monchu. Um, he was on loan last season. He was fantastic. He saw from um, our table graph last year. He was just the far and away the best, the most creative. He just he does everything that we want in a deep line playmaker. Um, he came in on a free transfer. He was out of contract, which was absolutely sensational. And you can see he's worth thirty one million pounds. Uh, if we click on his information, myself and the club. Oh, within his um his favoured, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, within his favoured personnel and favoured clubs, um, he now speaks fluent French. He is he's young as well, Monchu. Um, I'm very happy to have got him in on a free. Is he 20, 23? Yeah, twenty three years of age. You know, he can cover the defensive midfield. He can cover. Attacking as a box to box midfielder if need be, but he is primarily the deep line playmaker, which resulted in um in Vera getting pushed back to the ball with midfielder. Um, but we'll we'll take a look at that another time. Uh, Lasse Skerland came in on a free from FC Mitchelland. Um, a very very good very good personality. Um, we clicked about it his media handling as well. He's very level headed. Uh, he fits in quite well with the team. He's similar to Patrick Schick. Um, what have I just clicked on? Um, <laughs> and... um, he's a very, very, very good player. The problem with him is, I think he they naturally have him down as a deep line forward, and I get the impression that Mitchell were training them to be because his finishing isn't good. However, 
here's where treats come into it. Um, when he comes back from holiday, because you can't add player traits then, because his dribbling, his agility, his decisions, determination and flair are all very, 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 very good. What we're going to train him to do is what we did with Modorame, and it's to dribble around the goalkeeper before attempting a shot. Um, players with low finishing, that's the best thing to do with them, is get them to knock the ball, either knock the ball past opponents if they're stupidly quick, um, or go around the goalkeeper, especially if they've got good dribbling, which uh, Lasse has. Um, Denmark produces some wonderful players on this game. Um, Matt over at second yellow card, done a few Danish saves and a few build the nation saves within Denmark. And he's just produced some wonderful talents. Um, this guy could be very good. We're going to keep him at the club uh, it, within the under-19s until he... I want to say between maybe 18, maybe 19, and then we'll loan him out to one of the two feeder clubs we've got. Um, that is a very, very, very good way of of developing t uh, players on this game. Um, we basically got rid of all the old ones that they had. And we now have two affiliates. We've got Sion in the Rafstein Superliga in Switzerland, who we send the ones who are really on the verge of a first team chance. We send them over to Sion because the league is, you know, they speak French. It's great. They're getting league experience. Sion themselves um, aren't performing the best in the league. Can we go from last year's one? No, we can't. Uh, I can't. I, I don't know where they finished. I think it might have been fifth. So they never did great, but you know they they're on the verge of European football. Um, have they got it this season? FCC on. There you go. They've got Europa Conference League. So I'm sending these players out, nineteen between nineteen and, and twenty one years of age to play a season or two at Sion and fantastic. Um, players who maybe aren't as good as that go to Albacete. Um, I'll show you a few players that we're we're sending out there. But it's the facilities you want to look out for, and both of these have got great uh, training facilities, which means that the players will develop nicely, uh, and that is that's the aim of the game, really. Um, next up, um, because Modarami isn't the best out and out striker, and Patrick Schick is clearly more suited to a right inside forward position. We had a little look for players who were out of contract and uh, this <laughs> Alexander Lacazette was brought to our attention. Um, £55,000 a week for a player who still, he still got it. They're saying he might be past his best, but um, I think going into the Champions League, we've got a, you know, a, a, I wouldn't say a legend, he's not a legendary French player, but he's a well-respected French player, very hard working, really good movement, still got good physical attributes despite him being a bit older now, um, can finish a ball, is off the ball, is fantastic, composure, anticipation, whatever. Um, Lacazette is going to be our starting striker going into the season. Um, the board have sort of relented on assigning players at the age of 23 for the first team, which is quite good because it's not always the best thing to do. Um, so yeah, Lacazette coming on free, another really good player. Um, George Elustri was uh, again. It was another director of football one, and um, which is why I put so much faith in the director of footballs doing this. Um, let's see if we can just find the news item. Let's see if we can find them. Uh, here we go. So, Pablo Longoria, I have made an offer for Barcelona's 20-year-old Jorge Alustri. He will provide cover in central midfield. He will also provide cover for Flo Toban on the wing. Um, if we just go back to Jorge then, he is going to go out on loan to uh, Albacete. He looks like a really, really good player. But because he's not made any senior appearances for Barcelona, which you'd expect, and Barcelona be in, um, I believe they're in the third tier, on my save now, um, I thought we're going to send him off to, to Spain, let him get a full season under his belt at Albacete, uh, and then come back and maybe send him to Sion for a year, so we get him at the age of 22. I think by then, we'll have Monchu in his prime, Vera be in his prime, uh, and we'll have George A sort of waiting in the wings. So, you know, there's method to the madness. Um, next in is Thierry Correa. He's going to be the backup right back. Uh, can also cover at left back. Very good player on this game. Um, again, a three star player. Puts in a seven out of ten most weeks. That's exactly what you want. Um, next up, Fabian Luzi is another player that Longoria scouted. Um, I think he, yeah, he was a Barcelona too. Um, 
A very consistent player with, um, again, a Barcelona B. He's got good traits. He places his shots and he likes to beat the offside trap. He's fast enough to do so. His composure is decent. His technique is good. His finishing is really good. Um, it's his lack of work ethic that's the issue at the moment. Um, but everything else is, is spot on. So, we're, again, we're sending him out to, um, to Albacete. Let's give him a, a season or two there, see if he can develop mentally. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, Leonardo Belerdi, who you will have probably seen on the thumbnail. Um, he played for Marseille on loan in real life at the start of the current season in real life. Um, so he's got a good understanding of the club. Um, he speaks French. He's actually a decent player. Um, when you've got a centre-back who's quite slow... So you see he's got L11 acceleration and 12 pace. If they're anticipation and positioning uh, within the higher echelon, so you know the average of a player in the top league is 14 or 15, and then obviously the, the better they go above. Um, if he's got really good anticipation and really good positioning, he can still play really well at centre-back. So he's in, he's a squad, he's a squad option. We obviously need squad depth now. Um, with us being in the Champions League, you can see they're classing him as the fifth best centre-back. Um I still think uh, Kaletika and Bubakar Kamara are the best two, uh, but Malangsa also got a loan extension. Um, to just again, he, he does the job. He does what he needs to do. Um, he can also cover left back as well, which he did last season. Um, and obviously Filip Benkovic, a good player within his own right. He really is. He's, he's a bit too injury prone for my liking. Um, he did get a few injuries last season, so he only made eight appearances in the end, but he played quite well. Um, but again, it, it's the squad rotation that we need um, for this season. So that's uh, £5.5 million spent and £16.5 million coming in. Uh, you can see there's already one guy, one of our youth players, has already completed the loan to see on. It's this guy, a uh, 19-year-old Algerian called Yassine Damani. Um, he's great. Again, he's not the tallest, but technically and physically, he's brilliant. It's just the mental attributes that need to, to get better and mental attributes are going to get better at game time. Um, he, he's, he's got to see on for a season, uh, maybe two, we'll see how he gets on there, but he's going to be playing European football at the age of 19. Uh, Alejandro Pozuelo completed his low move, his move to Fiorentina after his low move. It was agreed um, they had a future fee of 12 million. Um, and I'm buzzing with that because he's shite, in all honesty. Um, and he was on stupid luck, 62 grand a week. I think he was on like 70 of us. Um, uh, again, a few more free transfers out. Uh, and Adam Murisic, who was the back right back, who made one appearance. Um, you can just see Correa is a better player than him on on the whole. Um, that leads us into the tactical setup of it now. Then, um, we changed the tactic up slightly. We just went balanced. Um, and we put the line of engagement a little bit higher. Um, that was because we were getting too far forward. And it was creating too much of a gap. And Kaletika and, and Saar or Cameron, whoever it was, are getting caught out quite often. And because Odero doesn't play as a sweeper keeper, because he's not got the um, the attribute. Like, to, to be fair, he probably could, but his electricity is not great and his first touch isn't great either. So he, he's the, the standing goalkeeper. Uh, and that's that's sort of how it's done. Um, but, it's worked. You, you've seen from you've seen from the um, from the the fixture screen and the schedule screen before that it worked. Um, so this is I've set it up. So this is, I think I think this is going to be the start on eleven. Um, Tovan's off the contract at the end of this season. He's thirty years of age now, but he can still do it. Um, I just if he can adapt to being like an attacking winger. And getting those crosses in for Lacazette and Schick, uh, I feel like it's a bit of a double-edged sword there. Like he he can do stuff himself, or he can create. Um, if that's not the case, we do have Jonathan Bamba and Arnold Danjuma who can come in and fill those roles nicely. We also have our third choice option, who you saw again, who the table of graphics and whatnot suggested should play a part this season in Luis Enrique, the Brazilian left winger, was on loan at Hannover last season. Had a very 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 good season. Uh, and he is now again a three-star player. He's just going to come in, maybe play some of the lesser games, maybe play in Europe if need be. Um, yeah, again, he's got a lot of room to grow physically and mentally. He's very good. His technicals aren't the best, but you know we're we're hoping to get that out of him. 
Um, so he's sort of the, the, the backup option. Uh, Kaladu Sadiba is going to go out on, on loan. Uh, Kikas, we have listed for £10 million. Um, he's, he's not of significant enough quality for us. Um, uh, Hugo Bertelli. Um, I found him in the under-19s. I, I forgot we had him. We sent him out on loan that much. Um, he's going to be sort of like the third choice deep line playmaker option. Just need to get some traits on him. Look a very good prospect. Um, and William Goebbels, who came in on a free from Monaco. Uh, a very good player on FM. You know, Monaco signed up for 17 million and we've got him on a free. Did he kick a ball for Monaco? One game there. Ten games there. And then he went to Belgium and then to Italy. Um, scored eight goals in the Serie A. The Serie A is classed as a better league than our league in this. So, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully he comes in. He's again. They're saying he's the fourth choice, but that's as a winger, as a striker. He's apparently the seventh choice, but they've got Luis Enrique, Fabian Luzzi is going out on loan, and Jonathan Bamber ahead of him, which is just not going to be the case. Patrick Schick again will only play up front if absolute need be. Um, so again, another player that we've got on a free. Shrewd spenders. We're we're saving the pennies, <laughs> but we're saving the pennies, and we're um, we're making the team better. I'd say. I don't. I don't think we've. Um, I think we've done a good job, to be honest. Delighted with the aspect, the financial aspect of Nets, Monchu, and Lacazette, but um, they didn't want us to sell Aaron Carmadin, and he left on a free to go to Nantes. Um, and that's sort of that, really. We've had to do it this way because the money situation's been quite bad, as you saw. Um, I'll just show you the guy that we had scouted to be. The start and centre back alongside Coletta Carr. Um, he was playing for. Let's go back there, actually. He was playing for Nantes um, and Inter Milan snapped him up for big money, really. Uh, FC Nantes. Uh, transfer history from last season. There we go, yeah, Thomas Basiala or Basila, twenty-four million pound they got for him. Um, he was just the, the scouts were raving off him. Um, he basically fit everything that we needed. He was a really good ball player too. Statistically, he was great. He was he was very progressive as a centre half, which is what we like to see. Um, but again, and he, he ended up going to Inter Milan for big money, and that led us to to get him and as, as a backup option and. Sort of doubling down with the options that we've already got, and let's let's coach them to be better players. Let's not just let's not just sign a lot of a, a lot of better players. But um, that that's going to be it for me. That was just sort of an overview of where we're going into at the start of the season. Um, we'll give an update at some point in the middle of the season. Uh, we do want to see some games or whatever. Um, it's up to you guys if that's what you want. Then that's what you'll get. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate the support. Um, and let's see, let's see if we can we can get our passports out of our draw. Let's go on a good European Cup run. One of the main aims of this save is to win a Champions League. Um, but I'll be the next French team to win the Champions League before PSG do. Um, I don't think they've won it yet. I still don't think they've won it. No, they've not won it yet. Um. That's going to be the aim. Can we do it this season? Going to be realistic and say probably not. Um, however, we'll definitely have a good run. Definitely have a good crack at it. And, oh man, look at this though. You've got the past winners. 1992-93 um, was the last time a French team won the, um, the Champions League. Isn't that just mad? You think about it. Ah, it's just mental. You think of all these mad French teams that have been about in the past, you can see PSG were runners up, obviously, last season in real life, when that Bayern team tore them a new one. Um, and these are the teams we'll have to compete with to, to win it. Uh, Liverpool team who've won it two years on the bounce now, still managed by Jurgen Klopp. Um, we don't get to see much of what's happened in the Premier League, but they've got Yao Felix, they've got Mane, Salah, Florentino, Luis, Curtis Jones, Rubinho... Well, Ryan Gravenberch, Mancini's son, Yota, 
Firmino on the, on the bench. bench. Man, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, just just, just a, a standout stand team in any division. division. Um, um, but that's, that's it for me, guys. Thanks for watching. watching. Uh, yeah, and, and as always, always take care. care.